I was recently looking through the analytics on my website and the most popular article on my website in the past 12 months was a video and an article I did almost two years ago on the most popular video camera for shooting real estate video. And at that time, I thought that camera was the Sony A7S Mark II, which also had the Sony 16-35 f4 lens on it. So do I still think this is the most popular camera? Here is my current thoughts on the subject. Hi, I'm Grant, and a really common question I get asked either through my YouTube channel or my website is what camera I'd recommend for shooting real estate video. Now, my first bit of advice on this is just about always use what you already have if you already have a camera and lens system, especially if you're a real estate stills photographer and you perhaps are looking to shoot video as well as stills. And also, it's always worth remembering that no matter what latest piece of camera equipment you may have, it is not as important as your skill in using it. Your skill and your, your experience will always outweigh the latest bells and whistles on the latest camera that someone is trying to sell you. However, if you don't have a camera or perhaps you're in the market now for a new system or you're getting started in video, I'll give you my thoughts on what I think are currently the best cameras and the best options for shooting real estate video. Now, like any YouTube video you may watch, I will obviously have my biases based on my experience and what I think is a good, good camera, but here is some of the factors that I consider when choosing a new camera system. There are five main factors that I take into consideration when looking at a new camera system, and these may help you with your buying decision. So these five considerations are budget, lens system, video features, low light performance, and usability. Number one, obviously, is budget or price of the camera or camera that you perhaps would like to purchase. And you, I'm sure, or many of you out there, like myself, always have a limited budget. So we are trying to spend our money as wisely as possible. And I'm sure many of you will be well aware that you can buy a camera system ranging from tens of thousand dollars to perhaps just under a thousand dollars. So work out an approximate budget first. Number two, lens systems. Always take into account what lens systems you may already be invested in. For example, if you are running a Nikon system and you have lots of Nikon lenses and then you've been looking at the latest Sony camera for shooting video, those lenses obviously won't be compatible. And so you are either gonna to have to invest in a new camera and lenses or perhaps stick with your Nikon set of lenses. So when I'm looking at a camera system, I'm often looking at what additional lenses I have to buy. So for example, you will often hear me talking about, and those of you that have enrolled in my Real Estate Video Bootcamp course will know that I, I prefer for shooting interior video on cameras, I really like the 18 to 20 focal length range. So therefore, you're gonna to have to have a lovely big wide lens for your camera system. And another example is I currently use the DJI Inspire 2, and it uses the, or the one I have is the, the DJI X5S gimbal, and this actually uses the Micro Four Thirds lens system as well. So I can actually take this lens off here and use it with my Panasonic GH5, which I'm shooting this on now, and that's the camera that I am currently using to shoot all my real estate video. Next up is video feature set. When I'm looking at a camera, obviously, and these days we're pretty spoiled for choice now, but we, we never used to be. So now when I'm looking at a camera, for example, the video features I look for are high frame rate recording, whether it can shoot in 4K, and especially important for you real estate video shooters out there, we are often shooting on handheld gimbal. So, and it's, well, it's really good practice to shoot in higher frame rates such as 50 and 60p. Now most cameras will shoot that in 1080p, but if you like to shoot in 4K, there's not many cameras that will shoot, for example, in 4K 60p. So that might be a factor that you need to weigh up. However, this, it's not a deal breaker for me. So my, especially for real estate video, predominantly my workflow is still in 1080p, but my Panasonic GH5, which I'm shooting this on, can shoot in 50 and 60p in 4K. So that gives me that added that added flexibility when, when using this camera system. Low light performance. As a real estate video shooter, you will often find yourself in a scenario where you're in shooting, or when you are shooting the interior of a home, and they are often dark and not very well lit. So therefore, you are often having to raise your ISO value on your camera to expose your images correctly. So some cameras are very good at shooting in low light, and the Sony A7 series springs to mind. My Panasonic GH5 is okay, but for example, I used to shoot a few videos with a or the original DJI Osmo handheld gimbal and that was terrible in low light. And what happens if I have to start raising the ISO on that gimbal, for example, the image starts to break up and the quality starts looking quite bad. So 
fe that is one of the feature sets I'm looking for in a video camera or a camera for shooting real estate video. Usability is another characteristic I look for in a camera, and this is a harder one to gauge if you perhaps you're buying online, but if you can get your hands on a camera, all, all the better. And what I mean by that is, for example, is the camera easy to use, for example, to, to set up and shoot and run it in full manual exposure mode, for example? Is it easy to get to controls to change your, your shutter and your aperture values, for example? Does it have a flip-out LCD monitor, which is quite important? For example, the Canon 5D doesn't have a flip-up LCD monitor, so it can make it a little bit tricky to use when shooting on a handheld gimbal, for example. Whereas my GH5 has a flip-out LCD monitor, which I can then tilt and use quite comfortably on a gimbal. And speaking of gimbals, another factor to bear in mind when you're looking at your camera systems is if you already own a handheld gimbal, does it support the weight of the camera and lens system you're looking at? So for example, some of the traditional DSLR Canon cameras, for example, and lenses can be quite heavy as opposed to the smaller mirrorless setup. So that might impact your buying decision as well. So those are my main criteria I use when I'm evaluating purchasing a camera system. So with that in mind, here's my current shortlist of cameras that I would often recommend for people out there to shoot real estate video. And also bear in mind, I am talking about the, the more smaller DSLR and mirrorless size cameras, not your big big full frame cameras such as your Sony FX9s or FX, FS7s or your RED cameras, which are in another realm altogether. In the higher end, I would recommend the Panasonic GH5S or the GH5. The GH5S is actually a lot better in low light than my existing GH5, and these currently retail for US1798 for the GH5S or US1297 for the GH5. Next up on my list is the Sony a7 III, and I recently did a video on this, which I'll link below on my channel and using it for shooting real estate video. And that currently retails for US 1998, but be aware that that camera cannot shoot 4K in 50 or 60p, which may or may not be a deal breaker for you. You can shoot in 50 and 60p in 1080p, but not 4K. Both those Panasonics I just mentioned can shoot in 4K at 50 and 60p. Next on the list is my mid to low end picks and the first of those would be the Sony A6400. Now this is currently retailing at US $898 which is actually is pretty good value. Also I would often recommend now as well the Canon 90D and its predecessor the Canon 80D. The Canon 90D retails at US $1199 and you can still pick up a Canon 80D for US $899 for the body only and then if you've got the Tokina 11-16 lens which retails for US $449 you've actually got a pretty budget and a very good system that will give you some very nice images for shooting real estate video. So those are my current picks and I know there's lots of other options out there but that's based on my biases and my experience because I've actually had my hands on all of those cameras. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, always remember that your skill set is actually far more important than the latest camera and the latest features on the latest cameras. Your ability to shoot video and make the most of situations to compose and to expose and move the camera is far more important than the latest Sony, Canon or Panasonic. And if you're after some training on how to shoot professional looking video, don't forget to check out over on my website my 10 tips for shooting professional real estate video and I'll leave that link below this video. And I also have other training courses on shooting and editing real estate video using Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro X and I will also link those below. That's it from me, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.